Hi, I'm John from Just Whiskey. If you like today's show, which I think you are going to, please give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. And thanks so much for the people that are subscribing. We're well into the uh, well over 800 subscribers, heading towards the 900 subscribers. And, uh, and with that traje trajectory, I hope we can hit a thousand before the end of the year. Wouldn't that be nice? And it wouldn't be possible if it weren't for each and every one of you that click that subscribe button, which really helps out. And the thumbs up liking helps out as well. So thank you very much for everyone that's supporting the channel, including the Patreons, who I haven't forgotten about you. And I am going to do... Um, for the Patreons, occasionally I will be doing a special review for Patreons only that will not be available to the general public subscribers. So, and that is going to be, I will be reviewing, I couldn't do it tonight, um, hopefully tomorrow night. Um, I will be reviewing the... Uh, <laughs> The Ardbag Hypernova, which I vowed never to do another Ardbag review. But there's a story behind that. So if you want to become a Patreon for as little as a dollar a month, you could watch and find out why I'm going to be reviewing for Patreons only the Ardberg, Ardberg, the Ardbag Hypernova. And remember, folks, it's just whiskey. So just give me a minute here while I unveil today's offering, okay? And this is how it comes, okay? With a nice little uh, slip cover, very heavy duty. Um, you could make a sock, puppet, a sock puppet out of it, you know? It's Halloween, right? So it could be a spooky little ghost, right? Um, so that, I think that that's a nice touch. Um, yeah, haven't haven't really seen that before. So today we are going to be talking about and reviewing from Piccadilly Distilleries in India the Indri Trini. Okay, so it's this is a Indian single malt. It's called Indri Single Malt Indian Whiskey, non-chill filtered, no coloring added. And Trini means the three wood, okay? Ke uh, carefully crafted by our master distiller and blender to bring you the most exquisite single malt from India. Matured and first fill bourbon, ex-French wine, and PX sherry casks, okay? And this is batch number two from March of 22. Okay, so they do release batches. This is a, an award-winning uh, single malt. Um, it's won many, many, many awards. I'm just going to give reference to one of them. It was voted Best Indian Single Malt in 2022 by the World Whiskey Awards. Okay. It's won many, many other uh, distinguished awards and accolades. Um, this is a, uh, a pot stilled single malt from what they describe as onion head pot stills. Okay. And it uses traditional Indian six row barley, unlike the two row that is predominantly used in Scotch whiskey. Okay. Um, and if you add water, it swims very well. Okay. Um, yeah, let's get into the uh, let's get into the review. This retails for between forty five dollars and sixty dollars, as are most Indian offerings. Most of them are not non age stated. Okay, because the climate generally is. Uh, very hot and things mature much more rapidly than they do in Scotland or other parts of the world. So I do not know 
the uh, how how old this is. Okay. Um, let's get into it. But but before I even get started, right out of the gate, right from the uh, the neck pour on this, I didn't know what to expect. I was very impressed, and I'm really enjoying it right out of the gate. One thing I do recommend, though, pour it, let it sit out a little bit, let it air out a little bit, and I'll tell you why in a couple of minutes, okay? Okay, on the nose, it's a very inviting, uh, it's got some of those red wine notes, okay? So this is a very complex, very complex uh, single malt. Um, it has a, a lot going on for it, and I can't find a single flaw in it. Okay, so you've got some a little bit of red wine notes. It's also got hints of bourbon. And the reason why I say let it air out a little bit, because like most bourbons, most bourbons have a very, very uh, pronounced acetone note to it. Okay, so this has some bourbon notes to it with a, a hint okay a hint of the acetone if you just leave this out for a couple of minutes um, the acetone note really dissipate dissipates but it's not prominent at all most of these notes there they they play an integral part but none overpower this is a uh, very complex and intrigate intrigated uh Sometimes I stumble on words. Um, it's a cohesive experience, but complex as well. Okay, it's got a little bit of brown sugar, vanilla, and honey. And it's also got some, some of those dill rye notes, okay? And now, I don't know if that's attributed to the six-row barley, because there's no uh, rye in here that I'm aware of, but... In there, there is that little bit of that dill rye note, okay? So if you're a fan of bourbon with a little bit of a rye character, that's just a, a small element, but part of this whole makeup of this. You also get a little bit of uh, roasted pineapple in there, a little bit of vegetal note. And to be honest, I could go... you. You could study this thing and go on and on and on, okay? Those are the general general nosing notes that I'm picking up, but there are others. The palate. It's a smooth palate. I don't have a problem saying that. It's, um, it's mouth coating. It's viscous. It's a sweetness to it. It also has a little bit of that cherry cough note, cough syrup note. So it, it's a bit syrupy, but it's not. It's not overly sugarly, sugarly, uh, sugar spirit, sugar, <laughs> sugar syrupy. Um, boy, and I really, I mean, this is my first dram of the night, um, and it'll probably be my last. Um, there's a little bit of funk to it as well. Um, it's viscous. Again, uh, it's got a nice texture. It's got some fermented fruits in there. A little bit of candle wax, okay? Um, and the finish leaves you with a bit of uh, mint menthol. A slight uh, grassy hay herbal note finishes medium long and I think this would appeal to bourbon drinkers bourbon rye drinkers um, it's very complex and I think this will appeal to uh, scotch drinkers as well Mm. It's delightful. I mean, it's got a complex nose. 
It's got a lot going on in the palette. It's inviting. It's got a very nice f finish to this. Um, this is very well done, in my opinion. Um, I do want to, and they've gone a long way with their packaging. I haven't even taken the bottle out. <laughs> um, here's what the bottle looks like, right? And here's the packaging. Inside the packaging, they have their logo imprinted inside this. So they've, you can tell they put a lot of pride into this offering, right? Um, and then what they do is this like a microphone cover foam, okay, is, was in the bottom of, of this tube so that the bottle rests uh, safely on, on this foam. However, um, this foam has a very strong uh, chemical odor to it. And as soon as I pulled this bottle out of the tube, I immediately took this and put it aside, this padding. But still, the cardboard reeks. The, the, the chemical smell of this has permeated the inside of this tube. And the only thing I could really, uh, and, and it's obsolete now, but back in my day, 35 millimeter film, okay, when you open up a package of real film that they put in cameras that actually had film in them, it kind of smells like that. A very, you know, kind of, off-putting chemical industrial smell and my only concern would be for long-term storage um you know this this it's it's a real it looks like appears to be a real cork here okay and it does have you know the typical plastic ar seal around here my only concern would be long-term storage you know with this chemical smell in there would that eventually slowly leach into this I, you know i don't know but it would be a concern of mine so my uh, advice to you if you do buy it um and you plan on staring, storing it long term i think this was put in there just for shipping purposes so it wouldn't break the bottom but get rid of this and and let this tube air out and maybe even i don't keep it in the tube to be honest with you um so that's what I would. Uh, that's what I would do. I would. I would get it out of there. Um, anyway, score wise, um, I highly recommend buying this again for the price point of between forty five dollars and sixty dollars. Um, I'm going to give this between an eighty nine and a ninety. I have no problem with that, and this is for my enjoyment level. I think others could find it rate even higher than a 90. I think um, one of the awards uh, gave it a 91. Okay, um, so uh, 89 to 90, it's solid. I'd highly recommend it. Go out and get it. You, I think you uh, can't go wrong. Anyway, um, if you like today's show, give it a thumbs up like and subscribe and you can see and i'm wearing my michael shanker t-shirt i just saw him in concert a couple of weeks ago i've seen him before he was a guitar player for scorpions and ufo and he's been solo for 40 years probably um and i'll tell you one what what a fantastic original hard rock heavy metal guitar player michael shanker doing his 50th anniversary tour right now with a crackerjack band and the singer is incredible out of this world uh i think the singer also sings for richie blackmore's rainbow okay that's how good he is um anyway if you like it give it a thumbs up like subscribe consider becoming a patreon with the link in the description below hats off to you all and take care folks <laughs>